for this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, spun make leaf sound. I'll start off by introducing myself. Hi, my name is Epic Graham. I'm with Internal Medicine. Is it alright if I do a spun and make leaf sound lesson? Perfect. Um, I'll go on to wash my hands um, and then just want to make sure that the patient uh, is stable before going on uh, to the examination. Um, in terms of uh, vital signs, I don't expect to find any vital sign abnormalities where I'll appear to spun and make Going on from there, um, just general inspection. Uh, you can look for a bulging. Then moving from there, I'll go on to percussion. Um, percussion is the most sensitive uh, test for finding uh, splenomegaly. If you get a positive finding with percussion, that would suggest for you to move on um, uh, for palpation. Um, so there's three different tests that you can do for percussion. Um, to start off, uh, I'll do Castell sign, uh, which is in the anterior auxiliary line. Move down to the lower, lowest intercostal space, uh, which is usually about the eighth or ninth Intercostal uh, rib space, and you percuss. And can you breathe deep breath in and out? <laughs> Perfect. And that should be tympanic during the whole time. It becomes dull at any point uh, during the exam as a positive finding. In terms of trough space, um, you have the costal margin, um, the anterior auxiliary line, and then you have the sixth, sixth rib. And the area all between that should always be uh, tympanic. If it's dull at any point, then that would be a positive finding, but this is all tympanic. Lastly, you can test for Nixon's uh, space. Um, so if you're just able to lie on, uh, this will be the uh, right uh, decubitus, lateral decubitus. And to test for Nixon's space, you have the costal uh, margin, and you go halfway of the costal margin, and then you go perpendicular to the costal margin, the way it's moving. And you percuss along there. It'll start off in panic, but then it'll get dull. You keep percussing until it gets to panic again. You measure that dull space, the distance of the dull space. If that's more than eight centimeters, that's a positive finding, um, which in this case is not. You can lie flat again. And moving on to percussion, or moving on to palpation. Um, there's multiple ways to palpate. To note uh, when the spleen enlarges, it enlarges both inferiorly and medially as well. So you want to actually start in the right lower quadrant and you want to slowly progress upwards uh, to the left upper quadrant. And when you're doing this, you can either do, there's the one-handed technique, you can breathe in now for me. And you don't want to move your hand in, perfect. And you just want to feel for the spleen actually sliding underneath. That's good. So that's the one-handed technique. You can help exacerbate this by folding your hands behind and pushing up. Can you breathe in for me again? Perfect. And then the last is the claw technique. Some people, they can grab their fingers underneath and breathe in for me, which I don't feel as well. Lastly, if you do palpate something, uh, commonly a thing that you want to differentiate from is just an enlarged kidney. Um, there's multiple ways uh, to differentiate that. First of all, um, the spleen will not have a superior border. You can feel a superior body border, so I would suggest just an enlarged kidney. A spleen will have a notch when you're actually feeling. Um, the kidney can have some tympany over top, just because of the stomach bubble over top. A kidney, you'll get a positive allotment sign where if you push up from behind, you'll feel it actually push up against your hand. When they enlarge, the kidney enlarges only inferiorly, whereas the spleen enlarges inferiorly and medially as well, so uh, obliquely. And then lastly, you can actually listen, and you can hear a positive scratch sign with the spleen. When you're scratching, you'll hear this on the bell of the, uh, of the, diap or bell of the stethoscope. Um, and so that's a way to differentiate uh, an enlarged kidney from a, a large spleen. Uh, and that concludes my explanation.